Welcome to California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and today we are joined by Jerome Horton. He is the chair of California's Board of Equalization. And sir, I'm sure you know that while California's unemployment is dropping a bit, it's still a bit stubborn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. for better or for worse, there are some pretty good jobs available with the state of California. And if you're watching on this network, I'm sure you're interested in the state of California. So why don't you give us a sense of potential job opportunities with our great state? I tell you, Brad, as you know, I started with the Board of Equalization when yes. I was 18 yes, years old. Yes, I did. And so advancing through the ranks, I kind of know the Board of Equalization kinda. inside and out a little bit. <laughs> kind of. Um, and the interesting thing Can about it. Can I interrupt it, for a second? Did you have any idea when you were 18 that in X number of years, you, Jerome <laughs> Horton, would become chair of no the board. Idea at I all, mean, board. Come on. Right. No idea at all. You know, it's, it's been an awesome opportunity, but also a responsibility. If I may ask, are your parents still with us? You know, my, my mother passed, but my dad is still with us. So yeah. he saw you go from <laughs> an 18 year old working at the Board of Equalization to chair chairman of the Board of Equalization. Yeah, it's kind of like a rags to riches story. You can't story. write this stuff. I mean, you really, you can't write this material. Yeah, it's been exciting. It's been a really, a really good opportunity to help others help themselves. I mean, Are it's been there exciting. folks that were there when you were 18 in the dark ages? Yeah, that they're are still, still, still there? there. Still there. Many of them I still know, you know, we're still friends. Uh -huh. and, and it's been fabulous because it allows me to make things happen. Now, be honest with me. Be honest with me. Yeah. I'm sure you started with other folks who were 18. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you would have put everyone you started with in a room mm -hmm. and someone would have said, one of you is going to be chair of the Board of Equalization in 20, 30 years, would they have picked you? Well, they would have had to wake me up first. <laughs> because, <seriously? laughs> because you were not the best worker at 18. 18 years old, you know what I mean? Uh, it was 30 years I sort of evolved really? and got a consciousness of you know helping people help themselves and got excited uh -huh. about that. So you weren't the guy they would have picked? To be the chair. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry to know, digress, man. but I, ha yeah. I had to. So we're, the, we're, the point is well taken. Yeah. I mean, career opportunities are great at the state. Huge at the state, of, at the state of California. Over the next five to ten years, Brad, we're anticipating upward of 100,000 people will retire. You know, right. the baby boomers, they're setting up, they're getting ready to retire. But what that's going to do is going to create about 100,000 jobs. Wow. Right now, currently, there are 3,755 right. jobs available at the state of California. Today. today. This moment. Today. And one of, our, you know, one of my initiatives is to make sure that we have internships, training right. programs to begin to prepare California. Because one of our challenges is having that qualified workforce so that they can meticulate into these right. positions. And what people should realize is that jobs with the state are actually well paying. They I mean are. the days of the, the private sector paying so much more than the state. Uh, not those not are today. Gone. Not and today. jobs with the state, while benefits have been pared down a bit, the perks are still pretty good. Our benefits are still excellent right. compared to private industry. Right. Uh, the salaries are very comparable. You know, it's, it's exciting times to work for the state of California. Lawyers, attorneys, clerks, accountants. collectors, accountants, At and so forth. At the Board of Equalization? Sure. I mean, that's how I got my start as a right. CPA, joining the Board of Equalization and, mm -hmm. and going to work to serve California taxpayers. Exciting. I know that part of your mission in serving yes. California taxpayers is looking specifically, I mean, you serve all of California, but you have a, a soft spot for small business. Yes, yes, Brett, you know, every, every month we're doing small business seminars. Right. We're trying to help them grow. You know, as the small businesses begin to grow into larger businesses, they create jobs, they create opportunities, they enhance the revenue for education, public safety, and all these things are, in, are so important to our economy. So it also improves the, you know, the economic environment for California. I mean, the way we're going to turn our economy around, jobs, quality jobs, and, and quality education is a solution to many of the problems we face today. Part of the challenges small businesses face in California is, look, for better or for worse, right. we are a higher regulatory state than other states. I know that in some of your seminars, you're looking at helping folks navigate. Yeah, they've got to be able to maneuver the system. The regulation mm -hmm. is, is onerous at times. But in many cases, it's because you don't know how right. to work your way through the system. So we want to educate. I believe, Brad, that education is one of our greatest enforcement tools. Are you, have you been able to pare down 
some of the bureaucratic maze that oh, hugely, yeah. hugely. The Board of Equalization is far more efficient now. We're 20% more efficient, oh, really? more friendly. We're reaching, we have to create almost 1.3 million businesses in California. Mm -hmm. So we're focusing on helping them start, maintain, and operate here in California. That's how important they are. You know, that we are the public servants. They are the ones who generate the jobs, they generate the revenue. So our job is to serve them in a way that they can accomplish their goals and objective and pay the minimum amount of taxes uh, within the law and avoid the frustration of the process. Speaking of taxes, I want to speak with you about tax credits. Yes. So as you know, the state of California recently passed a significant tax credit program mm -hmm. for Hollywood. Yes. Uh, tripled the size of its tax credit program. In the background, I'm sure you also know that Nevada was able to lure Tesla to build its battery factory in that state. Mm -hmm. Many folks have said that their tax incentive program was way too generous, and mm -hmm. California may have been the smarter one right. to let them move on. Give us a sense of kind of those two competing events and what your idea is behind these tax credit programs. You know, I met with Tesla, and Tesla mm -hmm. basically said that they were moving anyway because it was a closer location to their manufacturing mm -hmm. operation. They also committed to add another 3,000 jobs here in California. Right. It's down the road, so it's going to happen here in California. The, the film tax credit, I think, is a good beginning. But I think investing in our infrastructure, investing in our children, in the educational system, as well as uh, assisting them to become the innovators of the world, right. to be the most creative state in the nation, is where we stay ahead. That's what um, American ingenuity has what, always what done. What I'm trying to figure out, and clearly I am not an expert in tax credits, is mm -hmm. at what point does the state see diminishing returns? You know, I go back to Tesla. I was listening to uh, a report recently. And I guess Tesla is getting, I think it's $1.3 billion a year in tax credits. The governor says they're going to bring in $5 billion a year in, in, in investment or to the economy. That's not a huge margin. I mean, I can, you yeah. can see that margin starting to shrink, and all of a sudden, right. that is upside down. Well, the challenge with tax credits, Brad, is making sure that they're accountable. We've got to hold them responsible and accountable. For every tax credit, you ought to create a job. You ought to in, improve the environment. You ought mm -hmm. to do something positive, because California taxpayers are investing right. in you. You're becoming the partners to California taxpayers. So you should be about making their life easier and improving the quality of life for all Californians. But are we in a race to the bottom on tax credits? You, you, in some ways we are, but if we're smart about it and, and we use tax credits to invest in new technology, right. innovation, creativity, things that will save lives in the future, that's being smart. Because if you look at, for example, the Hollywood tax credit program, yes. so we were at $100 million. The new program takes us to $330 million. Right. Now, New York is at $440 million. Right. So I would have thought, well, let's just match New York. You know, we're California. Right. But one could argue, well, no, we were smart. That w we didn't go as far as New York. Maybe New York is, is not really gaining as much as they think with that extra $110 million. Well, it's, it's not the amount of the tax credit. Oh, it's really? how it's used. Mm. If it's, you know, taxation was, was in, originally intended to modify behavior. Right. It's not a revenue generation. Some now people, it is. Some but, people are yeah. now treated like, the, you know, taxes are too high mm. in so many different areas. It's penalizing some folks. We do need to deal with that. But at the same time, we've got to collect the revenue in order to take care of education, take care sure. of health care. And things of the nature. Mm -hmm. We just have to be smart about it. I think that's the challenge for California is being able to to figure out a way to stimulate the economy. So do you believe measures? that our Hollywood tax credit program is too little too late or you know it, it, it's it's strong we're in good shape you know we got in just in the nick of time I think it's a good beginning, Brad. Oh, good. I think it's a good beginning. Mm -hmm. I think there are many, many other things that we need to do in order to encourage uh, operations, uh, movies to be created. The regu mm -hmm. regulatory process, mm -hmm. we need to change that right. in, in a way so that LA it's County's easier to create looking has, has tried to create that unified film LA, as Eric you know. Eric said he's working right. on it. Sure. The mayor's working on it. He's, I'm excited about okay. it. We're working together to try to help with that. Okay. He's Jerome Horton. He is chair. He is chair of the Board of Equalization. <laughs> My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's California Edition. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> that was